First Chronicles 17 Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, and David has a son named Nathan, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars. That's a good fragrant wood. But the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. And look at chapter 16, verse 1. So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. So there's a tabernacle Moses made. There's a tabernacle that David made. David and his kingdom are under peace. And he's looking out the window and he sees that tent out there. And he's saying, that's not good enough for God. He's saying, I live in this house of cedars and that the Lord is out there in a the tent. There is something wrong. And we, when we get to 2 Samuel chapter 7, we see that he's in peace. There's no wars. There's no conflicts going on. But the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. And there's a tent. Chapter 16, verse 1. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thy heart, for God is with thee. Now, David, I mean, Nathan does not seek any counsel of the Lord. He just, okay, David, do it. Do what? Well, the implication is, and what we see afterwards, is David wants to build a temple. David wants to build something of magnified, of honor and grace greater than what David has. And Nathan's like, go ahead and do it. And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan saying, now why didn't it come to David? God spoke to David countless times. I believe Nathan's got to swallow some crow. Nathan, you told him to do whatever. I mean, Nathan said, you do whatever it is. And God comes up to, uh-uh, that's not my word. You go back to David and you tell him what I say. And we got to be careful when we talk because when we say something, we may say something that's not right. And we are liable to, to go back and make it right. Now, David is left before verse 4. He's left with the implication that God's going to approve of what I'm going to do. And look what God says. I don't approve of it. But the prophet told me. Well, even a good prophet can be wrong. Go and tell David, my servant. Look at that. My servant. Thus saith the Lord. Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. So see, when Nathan said, go ahead and do it, when David speaks, it's speaking about a house. Notice nowhere in the Old Testament, nowhere in the Gospels, nowhere in the book of Acts when that temple, whether it's a tent, whether it's Solomon's temple, whether it be the temple built by Ezra or be the temple of, of Herod, it is never called church. It's not the tent. It's not the building. And yet you got churches today. Oh, we're, we're King James. We're on this side of Calvary. But they go back and name their churches temples and tabernacles. The New Testament version of temples tells us we are the temple of God. So when you go ahead and call your church a temple and you go with scripture with scripture, oh, our stones, our building, whatever our, our church is made of, that is of God. That's the body of God. Absolutely not. See, you know what you want. In the Old Testament, the temple, the tent. Yes, that was the meeting house of the children of Israel. But there's one thing different. From the building that's in the New Testament. God was in that building. He sat there at the mercy seat. Problem. Only once a year, twice, could only the high priest go in. 
this side of Calvary, where the temple is not building, but it's a body. Jesus told him, he said, listen, uh, uh, something about the temple, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. Well, they mistaken it as the bricks and stones. And Jesus said, no, it's my body. And today, you don't go to a church and Jesus Christ shows up at the altar. Though the Catholics believe that. They believe that Jesus is in that box and that when they do their hocus pocus, that becomes the little body and flesh of Jesus. That's their temple of their mercy seat and the Holy of Holies where the priest stands. The Baptist church is, oh, here's God. God's here. Yes. But he's not in the pew. He's not in the altar. He's in all the saved individual hearts. And our temple is our bodies if we're saved in the Holy Spirit and dwelling with us. And David is looking at that piece of cloth out there. That's not good enough for my God. And yet the Bible says the, the dust and rags that we are, the Holy Spirit and dwells with us. And God says, no, I didn't know. Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. So what David thought and what Nathan said, go ahead and do, God says, no. The men of God can be wrong. Though they sit on their ivory, ivory palaces. I can't be wrong. I'm a man of God. Okay, pride just goes before a fall. Go and tell David, my, and he's going to go tell David. He's going to eat crow. He might have to, you know, and maybe record or not record. He may have to go, David, you know what I said the other day? Yeah, it's wrong. This is what God had to say. Because he told David, do all that's in thine heart. God spoke to him that night. No, you can tell David he can't do it. That's God telling the prophet, you got to eat some crow. Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. That counteracts verse 2. And that explains what David's mind and David's thought and David's heart is in verse 1. A house. Since the day that I, uh, now, for have I, verse 5, for I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day. So see, he dwelt in that tabernacle that Moses built and set up. There he is at the mercy seat. And that's what every carnal Christian wants of their church building. They think literally that God's knocking on their door. That's not the case. He's knocking on a man's heart. And the Lord said, For I have not dwelt in the house since the day that I brought up Israel out unto this day. I've been dwelling with Israel all along. I've had no problems. And we'll see more in depth detail when we get to 2 Samuel. But have gone from tent to tent. And I'm going to assume there the tent that Moses sets up. And Aaron in the book of Exodus. And I'm going to assume that that other tent is the one in verse 16, verse 1. Because as far as we're recording from Exodus, uh, the close of Exodus, unto 1 Chronicles 16, there is never ever any writing to say that they rebuilt or redid that tabernacle. And when we read 16, verse 1, it says tent. And when we come to God speaking, he says, from tent to tent. And when you look at the commentators, which they could be right and wrong in some cases, they say, you know, it was from place to place. It don't say place to place. It says tent to tent. So I'm going to assume from the tabernacle that Moses built unto the tent that David made, chapter 16, verse 1. It might be the fact is that God's telling David, if that's the case, that tent that you built for me, because your heart was in it, I'm content. No pardon the pun. I'm content with what you built for me. Because you're, because we know David, for his heart is in it. And when we, we're going to do the, the, the covenant made to David on another night, Lord willing, Listen, when we give God our best, when we give God our heart, we may look at it and say, God, it ain't enough. It's horrible. And God might be up there and say, you know what? Hey, I don't look on the outward appearance of man. I look upon the heart. 
And that's actually the calling of Samuel, Samuel when David was anointed and his brothers came for it. No, stop looking at their muscles. Stop looking at how tall they are. I am looking at a heart. And I guarantee when David built that tent, he sat there. Nope, that's not good enough material. Nope, that's not the right way. And before that tent, before that ark came in, it's got to be done right. I guarantee that's what David did. He didn't go down to the, to the five and dime storm and just pick a, you know, one with a coupon. And we're not told how the tent is made like we're told the tent in the tabernacle. But there were animal skins, there were animal furs involved, the, the one in Exodus that Moses did. And I guarantee you, this is the same case. David got the best skins, the best, whatever he made this tent, he may have copied Exodus. And the Lord says, hey, I go from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to another. That's kind of interesting because the tabernacle we saw in Exodus. Maybe this tent here that David built, maybe it's the other tabernacle. But since Moses built and since when they set up that tabernacle in the book of Exodus until now, God says, hey, and we're going to see in first and second Samuel, God's not complaining. You realize who's doing the complaining here? You know, you say complaining is a sin. David's doing the complaining. Look at it. Lord God, you're not getting the best. It's a reverse complaint. David's complaining that God does not have the best, and David's sitting there in luxury. Something wrong with this. The Israelites in the wilderness, we don't have enough water. We don't have enough food. We don't have enough water. We don't have enough food. We don't have enough water. We don't have, oh, we go back in Egypt. And David's sitting there, oh, there's not enough for God. What a change. God says, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining at all. Whithersoever have I, yeah, whithersoever I, God, have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, the book of Judges, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedars? Have I ever, have you ever heard recordings? Have you ever heard me say, I demand a house? And when you find the law written about that, God said he'll put his name in a place. He will put name his name above names among one of the children, one of the tribes of the children of Jacob. And it comes to be Judah in, we find out in Jerusalem, which is also the ben Benjaminite territory, to put his name there. Here is the place we're going to be made. Even if it's a tent. Where did the idea of this temple come to be? It came from David. And we're going to read later on when Solomon sets it up. There's a place that says that David gave the plans to Solomon. David becomes a type of God. Solomon becomes a type of Moses because Moses came off that mountain with the plans that God gave him to build his. There are two sets of blueprints. One God gave Moses and one David will give Solomon. It's David's idea to build that wonderful palace. God says, I'm just happy with a tent. Why have you not built me a house? So 2 Samuel chapter 7. Verse 1. This is how much David loves the Lord. Huh, there goes my voice. So when you see these great big church buildings in their splendor, we built it for God. That wasn't God's idea. You realize you can have this big church, stained glass windows, and whatever denomination. And you can have all that space. I was wondering how much roof space they have. And you can have more of God in a storefront church that loves the Lord, serving the Lord, that are saved and trying to do right. And God's like, I don't care about size. It's your heart. You can have the biggest congregation, whatever de denomination you are. And if they don't have the heart for God, God's not in it. You can have three or four people sitting down together. 
And they're not having, okay, we're going to read the scripture, and what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Not doing it, but having someone lead the Bible study, have someone lead the Bible, and with all our hearts seeking to do right with God, and God says, I'm with them. And when you read about the church of the Laodiceans in Revelation chapter 3, you got a church. Oh, how great we are. How wonderful we are. We don't need nothing. We're so rich. We're so wonderful. And God's standing outside the door saying, anybody want to come out? And once I come out, I will come in unto him and sup with him. You think he's gonna you think that verse means he's gonna come into that church and have a fellowship? Absolutely not. That means he's gonna enter into that guy and have sweet fellowship together. And chapter 7, verse 1 in 2 Samuel, and it came to pass, just like we read in 17 of Chronicles, when the king sat in, in his house. So David's home. He's sitting. The Bible knows the difference between sitting and standing. You know what David's doing, according to that scripture? He's sitting down at a window looking at, the, looking at the house of God right now. David had a window, had a window, and had a seat where he would look at the Lord. Do you have in your house a seat and a window that it's your favorite window, is your favorite seat? Maybe you got a bird feeder, maybe a pond, or whatever. You know, I like to watch the traffic. You know, you sit there, you, you know, you look at whatever your favorite window is or your, your favorite seat on the porch or wherever it is. David had one. And his eyes were on the Lord. And the Lord had given him rest, peace, roundabout from all his enemies. There's no war, there's no conflict. God gave him the peace. He's just sitting down. <laughs> look at that place. He's probably looking at his. He's looking at the Lord. He's looking at his. He's looking, and maybe a servant said, Sir, would you like some water or would you like some, I don't know, whatever kind of thing? He's like, That the king said unto Nathan, the prophet, See now, <laughs> what's he doing? Nathan, look out that window. I dwell in a house of cedar. Look at this room. He's in, a, he's in a room of cedar right now, I guarantee. Look now. Here he is. Nathan, look at this. But the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. See that out the window? You see in this room? There's trouble. There's a problem. What is it? I am living better than God is living. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that's in thy heart. For the Lord is with, with thee. Uh-oh, remember, that's not what God wanted. And it came to pass that night, again, that's the same thing, First Chronicles, that night God shows up, that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shall thou build a house for me to dwell in? There it is, there's, that, there's the context, the house. David's looking at his house and he's looking at the tent. My house is better than God's house. There's something wrong. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt. There's extra information. Ever since they come out of Egypt, I haven't had a house. I didn't ask for it. Even to this day. But have walked in a tent. And the tabernacle. So the tent and tabernacle is not the house. Look at that. I have not walked. Wait, wait, wait. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house. Since the time I brought the children of Israel. Even to this day. But I have walked in a tent in a tabernacle. I have been a traveler with Israel. I have been a nomad. Wherever Israel went, wherever we went, there I was in that tent or that tabernacle. A house definition is, I have not been planted yet. Israel's been planted, but I haven't. Planted. Listen, you guys have settled this land since Joshua. You have been fighting for this land in Judges. We're going to see in a moment. I have not yet ever asked for a house. 
I've been dwelling in that tent. And while King Saul was king, I was just put off out of the way. I even sent one time in Dagon's house. I had to bring that guy down, make him fall down and worship me. I sat in Dagon's house. And all the places wherein I have walked. That's kind of funny. God's presence is with Israel. He says, where I have walked. It was the sons of Aaron. I can't think of the name right now. That carried the ark. Kohath. Huh? Kohath. Kohath. They carried that ark, and that ark was covered with the tent that made the cover in the holy place. God says, I've walked. You know, he also said in the law that I believe we read today, if you go out to go go poopy, cover, cover your poopy with the power of your weapon, because when God comes walking again, he doesn't want to see your poopy on the ground. But I thought you dealt in the ark, in the mercy, in the ark. No. His realm is beyond that mercy seat. He is in the camp walking around. Listen, Santa Claus only comes once a year. Jesus Christ showed up 360, well, yeah, 360 days of the Jewish calendar. 12 months of 30 days, the Jewish calendar. God was there all the time. He didn't come at one particular time of the year. Now, the priests came one particular time, atonement, day of atonement. In all the places where I have walked with all the children of Israel, spank I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I command to feed my people? Now he said judges in First Chronicles 17, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? I never asked for it. I never demanded it. I commanded commands of commands of rights and laws and all that. But I never said Look how long it took. Now, Judges, let's see, Judges, the first chapter, I'm going to, don't, I mean, don't go there. But 1425 BC, and this says BC 1042. So you're looking at approximately 400 years before someone in Israel said, we're doing a lot better than God. When we came in this land, we fought for this land, their houses were built, the vineyards were planted. The, the fig trees were, were growing and ready to be picked. Everything was prepared for us. The rock walls were built. The wells were dug. We just had to conquer and move in. And approximately 400 years, forgive my, my math, finally someone comes up to the plate and says, God, we got a problem here. What's the problem, David? We are doing a whole lot better than what you're doing. But you know what David's not seeing? Where God dwells in heaven, where he's got the cherubims, he's got the angels, he's got glory. But he's not really getting that much physical glory in the nation of Israel, in the land, living out in a tent. When the king is living in a palace. You want a revival in America when that president looks out the White House and says, God, I am doing far more better than you are. We got to give you something better. How can you give something God the better in America to, to get right with God, to make America great again, and to be a Christian nation? You got to put the Bibles and Jesus Christ back in the courtrooms, back in the schools. You got to remove the idols. You got to remove the religions. And you got to stand a base and a foundation upon Jesus Christ alone. If you don't like it, you, you can hop over our wall and leave. But you're not going to do that. And America will not be made great. Nope. David, he's making Israel great. And wait till you see the celebrations and the great and the, and the joy when Solomon builds that temple. Glory to God. And that's not New Testament. We don't build temples. We don't build those things for God. We build ourselves up. We're to take a Christian who's saved and raise them up. Grow them, fit them properly in the body. That's the growth.